My name is Silke Hardland. I'm originally from Germany, but I live now in Cairns, Queensland, Australia. I'm Kath Langley from the UK. I'm Chris Brady and I'm Irish. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm Anna Reynolds daughter from Sweden, but I live in France. Hey, good day. My name's Lou Davis. I'm from Tasmania. I'm Sharon Betts from Brisbane and Queensland. I'm Jackie Briggs, and I'm from Australia, New South Wales. I'm Jessica Cole, and I'm from Perth, in Western Australia. <coughs> I'm Sandy Stanway from New Zealand. I'm just tapping. <laughs> 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 he said, I've forgotten, where's my name tag? <laughs> I'm Sean Coleman and I'm from the UK. Okay. I'm Bonnie McIntyre from New South Wales in Australia. I'm Rebecca Holloway from the UK. I'm Sally Brett from the UK. Jennifer Wu from Melbourne, Australia. Head on down the fence and then around, yeah? Ladies first, Josh. Just... <laughs> what are you English Thank you, Mr. Chef. You're a lady, sir. Go on, you're saying. I'm just following Chris. Oh, oh ladies first. Members <laughs> <laughs> before. The little black horse, yeah? He put his head down first, he travelled out with his ears forward and stopped worrying about the hind. Okay. And then they, he found peace and he had rhythm in his feet, yeah? And the reason I asked you to start observing these things is that herd is the same herd that you're going to be in when you're riding. And you're going to be the bit that drives my horse away, yeah? So say if I want to swap sides with Bonnie here, I've already done my switch with my tools, yeah? Get, get in the habit of when I present myself to my horse that the inside hand or the hand closest to my horse is going to be meeting. So I can be have a something in my hand, yeah? Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh... Took for granted, seem important now. What once was routine turned to sweet surprise. It doesn't get much better than this. We're lost in a kiss, and time belongs to us. Oh, it doesn't get much better. Session with your horse. Have you the end in mind? 
So you're preparing them and then once you've done something with them, you can observe, remember, compare, and then think about what you're going to want to improve and then help them with the next time. So set them up. It's getting in that habit. Is I'm going to give you all the tools so you know how to solve a puzzle. Yeah? Can you yield to and from pressure? And can you um, accept rhythmic motion at this, um, in motion and at the standstill? And no matter then when they go, go, whether it be a show or an event or just somewhere new, they go, I've got the tools to solve this. Hurry up and relax, yeah? So it becomes their, um, their default, so to speak, yeah? Rather than relying on a survival instinct. Well done. So at every moment, are they responding to pressure appropriately? Or are they reacting to it? Both steady pressure and rhythmic pressure. Do they really understand pressure? Because only then can they start to think and solve a puzzle. And then balancing that with, are they confident or the unconfident? moment have we got the horse confident, thinking, and then for trying to solve the puzzle. Well done. Yeah, really strong. Good work. When you got to the horse's mind and when you didn't have the horse's mind and there was one time where I realised that I went to ask Baron if he could help me saddle and I just forgot about the horse and just left him on the rope thinking, hold on, he's not with me. And as soon as I thought about that, it was really quick to get him back. And so just being aware of having their mind all the time. When we let them go in the herd, it was just really nice that when you walked off, you were still connected and just followed me to the, the fence. So it was just good having that connection all the time, not just a little bit here and a little bit there. You sound like a broken record a bit, but the, the emphasis on fix it up and wait. Yep. And wait and be the big thing and have a play with the new fellow yesterday. Uh, he's having a lot of trouble accepting me in zone three on the, on the fence on the offside. So I have the opportunity to be able to, to give him the time. And he had a really big let down, a lick and chew. So um, for me, I, in, in the past, I've been just fix it up and get it fixed, rather than fix it up and be there. I just worry about what's going on next. But this time around, it's, it's a deeper understanding of what a horse needs to understand. Good. Well done. <laughs> to get true acceptance, yeah, so the more you can look at it and go, if I can set this up for them to find it, and then when they find it, that's when they go, this is not a bad idea, so this is not a bad leader as well, yeah? So, um, and Pat always says, try to cause it that you're part of the solution, not part of the problem. And sometimes when they're in that tolerating um, phase, you're still part of the problem versus part of the solution. Does that make sense to you? Yeah? But terrific, but like when you would come past, it, um, I would lose connection to her. Like she was anticipating you, she would see you come with the flag and she would think, I'm out of here. <laughs> you know, so I had motion if I seen you, but I didn't really have much connection. Like I would lose yields and, and that kind of thing. So I was really just thinking about, you know, how to really gain the most from the horse and the use of the herd in that situation. Good. A little bit of, like wanting it say is quickly, how quickly did your horse start to buy into another conversation or did it stay with you? And then also the same thing with yourself. Were you listening to other conversations versus focusing on your horse, yeah? Whether that's a friendly game of motion or just sitting there and waiting until the opportune time came to then join into the flow, so to speak, yeah? Just a good way to think about um, when we're having a conversation with our horse. Not only on the ground now that you're starting to have their mind, but also in the saddle. And having their mind is still in the friendly game. It's not relaxed now I'm not going to listen to you or pay, be aware of you. It's all, you know, as much as we'd like their mind to be with us all the time, can we offer them something all the time? Yeah? Or how are you different now? And I've asked you this, this will be my third time. How are you different than the last time? I think, you think you're kind of, you think you're kind of doing it, but yep. you have a whole different understanding, especially, as I said, like the puzzles and, as um, Sharon said, with the observing as well. Like, it's just like being loads of learning and just helping them become learners and setting up better for them. Yeah, well done. That's cool. Good. Loads better. Really? Well yeah, sure. Yeah, mine's yeah. kind of similar to Josh's as well. It's like, like you said the other day, it's very easy to become normal in a natural world. 
do just get into the habit of, oh, I need to fix this, and therefore I'm going to use this technique, and I'm going to do, you know, yeah. as a, and really not thinking about getting the horse's mind. Um, so yeah, just really getting a deeper understanding of how to use the psychology, and, and it's most important to have the horse at least thinking about the task than, than kind of doing it. You know. um, so yeah, that's been a good thing. Yeah. And the whole process that we put these colts through, you know, we're giving them calmer, smarter, braver horses at the end of the day, and it's not about, you know, we can, we, you know, we can get like 30 rides on them, but yeah. we can guarantee that the rides that we put on them and the process we put them through is far more beneficial for the horse than it is for, for um, well, How else will you be different as a, as a teacher of, of, of this program? Sure. I think a lot of times students will say, I'm having a problem with a, a certain task. Um, so really trying to cause them to think about breaking it down and how many things can they do to prepare that horse to do that task as opposed to focusing on that task. Um, I think I'll definitely that will be the, yeah. one of the main things I'll take away from this. Wonderful. In fact, you'll get to a point you it's isolate, separate and recombine. Yeah. It's not about the task, what are the ingredients to it. And you can often start to teach the tar without even telling them sometimes. You can pick you in your own mind as a teacher some ingredients. Yeah. And as they start to practice the ingredients, someone will might say, hey, you know, couldn't I use this for my change of direction? The minute you, yeah. Then they've got... understanding now of the psychology and why we play the seven games. A bit like Sandy said, the techniques are always there and the understanding of the program. But when you've seen it applied to new horses, baby horses, and the process that we've been working through, then it becomes really important that you are causing that horse to think, causing that horse to solve puzzles, rather than just, well, I've done the first three games and that's it now. Next? Yeah. <laughs> Moving on, making it Next, more sexy. progress, ambition, <laughs> outcomes. Yeah, so every day, every horse, every student, I'm going to be a lot more aware of the psychology behind it all, and how we can set it up better for the horse. Life changing. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> I'm just there and I'm from the UK. I see you smile. I watch you go. for 
for as long as I 